Hi, my friends. So let, let's continue. I left you with the trade routes, right? And so if you put all the trade routes that we have discussed thus far uh, together, you will get, you know, something like this, right? Um, all connected, right? Asia connected to Africa um, and almost going to, you know, well, to to Anatolia, right? And of course, from there, from here, from Eastern Mediterranean, going to Europe, right? Okay, so we would we would we would think that this is the case. However, uh, what is actually the case is that the Abbas, the Umayyads, had not control, had not uh, conquered all of Iran. Right? The Umayyads had not conquered this part of Iran, northern Iran. Who, who argued this? Yeah? The, uh, yours truly argued this, right? In, in, in the book, my book, In Decline and Fall of the Sasanian Empire, um, I came and argued that, um, look, the, the Parthians that were these dynasts that, um, you know, the, that had, they had their own empire for more, close to five centuries, right? From, say, 220 BCE, to 220 CE, right? Um, give and take, yeah? Um, so, so I came and argued that um, people, pay, please pay attention, right? The Arabs, actually, the reason they conquered Iran was for the sake of trade. Right. What? When? When did I make this argument? I made it in the in the in my book, which was uh, translated into Persian and then into Arabic. So um, you can read it uh, now in three languages. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, I came and argued that okay, you see the Khorasan Highway, which was, which which was this highway here. Uh, let's go here, which was this highway, very bad color, sorry guys, um, let's see, which was this highway here, right, this one, yeah, um, was not conquered through the Umayyad period, right, so that for, so, so that, um, this route, Right, uh, was was not conquered through the Umayyad period. What does that mean? Uh, it means from six sixty to seven fifty. Of course, there were they they attempted the Arabs attempted to um, to uh, sort of conquer this part of the land, but they had actually made um, but. Uh, they were not successful because the dynasts, the Parthian dynasties that were living here in this part of Iran, right, they had maintained their control of these parts, and that's because of the following. So now, my friends, I'm going to tell you a very, very fast, but an alternative history to what we have been, uh, with what to what what we have. Uh, sort of had so far, right? Um, and this is the, and the, this alternative history is as follows. As far as the life of the Prophet Muhammad is concerned, even the Islamic tradition um, argues that we do not know, um, a, we do not know the first 40 years of Prophet Muhammad's um, sort of um, life. We, we, we know very little of the first 40 years. 40 years of uh, Prophet 
uh, Muhammad's life. So that is that is basically if he was born, if we are told he was born in five seventies, right? Forty years that makes it to six ten. So it is it is it is um, basically what what we have of his life, basically, yeah, is the is the uh, is the narrative that. Uh, uh, that the Abbasid narrative that was constructed for us, right, um, and uh, in subsequent centuries. But anyway, in this this Islamic narrative itself starts basically from the year six ten, i.e., the year that the Prophet, you know, was called to uh, to his mission as a prophet. The first angel Gabriel came to him and he said, recite, right? Remember? Okay, so it, what is the alternative history? The alternative history is that, okay, we, we know that somebody called Muhammad did exist, right? But for example, we don't know whether there was a Mecca or not, right? It was during the uh, during the rebellions of, of Abdullah ibn Zubair and Mukhtar, right, that all of a sudden we get the uh, the um, sort of narratives about Mecca, and Mecca enters into the narrative of Islamic history. So there is one camp that argues this, right? We are not sure what, when was uh, Mecca sanctified actually as the house of God, right? Um, at, was it during the uh, lifetime of Prophet Muhammad or not, right? So there is this, uh, this argument that, okay, so the, the, the Hijra that took place, some other scholars, Yehuda Nova comes and argues that the Hijra that took place was actually from the Sinai and from the north, Northwest, and it was to Medina, right? Um, okay. I, I don't have my glasses and I cannot... Oh, here we go. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, my friends. Give me a second. Okay, yes. Um, Medina. Here, right? Um, it was... Uh, it was a uh, immigration to Medina, not from Mac from Mecca, but from the northwest. Then there is the issue of well, um, what about the Quran? What about uh, the um, the holy wo word of God? Right? When was this actually uh, written down? Right? So the earliest Quran that we uh, have found, right, the earliest Mus'haf, if you will, which is a leaf of the Qur'an, but the whole Qur'an is also known as Mus'haf, a leaf of the Qur'an, right? Uh, the verse, the first singular, right, um, sort of evidence that we have of the Qur'an is a Qur'an that is, is, is basically one chapter of the Qur'an. It's like not even a chapter, it's basically a few surahs of the Qur'an, right? Um, which carbon dating had, has put in the years 540 to 6. 50, right? So it might be even prior to, I mean, we might have a Quran prior to the uh, lifetime of Prophet Muhammad. Is that the case or not? Okay. Then people came and argued that, no, it was because of trade. The whole thing uh, was took place because of trade, um, because, well, you know, uh, the... Western Asia, Western Asia, as you can see, is the crisscross of trade routes, right? And um, and even even now we are concerned with it, and we're, I'm going to talk about 
we have talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it more about the importance of uh, of the Eastern Mediterranean later on, right? Um, so some some came and argued, no, it was on account of trade routes, and that revisionist history was again revised, then uh, and then again a, a new. Um, theory was put forth that no, in fact, this was a, um, a sort of a, a total transformation made possible by, uh, by Islam, by the coming of Islam, and the fact that the Arabian population, right, had gradually come to speak the same language and had found their interest in collaborating with each other, especially when they were what they were involved in the, if you recall, in the Sasanian Byzantine Wars of 602 to 628, especially because they uh, they knew, um, uh, you know, that that the Byzantines and the Sasanians. Um, have very little power left after three decades of war, they went on conquests, right? So, so it, I mean, long story short, uh, is that there, there are, for the past uh, four decades or, or so, uh, there have been all kinds of questions raised about the nature of this movement that uh, takes place in the Arabian Peninsula. Was it a movement? Wasn't it a movement? Was it religious? Was it based on trade? You know, uh, who was Prophet Muhammad? When was the Quran written? Uh, and so on and so forth. All of these issues have been open to discussion, but uh, have become open to discussion. And the narrative of origins, that the Islamic narrative of, of origins, has been sort of um, uh, critically addressed, at least for the pa uh, past uh, four decades, with, with actually very interesting results. So, one of, the, one of the things that I too hinted on in, the, in, in my work was that the Arabs, they, they actually wanted to go to the, um, to the, um, to the mercantile cities of Central Asia, right? Like what? Like Balkh, Bactria, like Kabul, like Herat, and um, like, you know, other cities here. Uh, in Central Asia, right? Not in Inner Khorasan, right? But in Central Asia, which is where actually the 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 revolutionary movement of the Abbasid started. So in in my forthcoming work, I'm going to be arguing that the Abbasid revolution was actually launched in order to um to um conquer the northern routes that I was talking to you about, yes? This northern routes and what is called the Khorasan Highway, right? Khorasan Highway. If you, if you um, notice here, right, this is already Holwan. We are already co have come down the Zag Zagros Mountains. This is at the foot of the Zag Zagros Mountains, right? And, and to the north of Iraq, what we call... Jazeera, right, um, and um, so this is the this is the uh, overland route that goes actually to Central Asia, right? Goes to um, specifically these cities here, right, and onward to China. Right. This is what became the very famous. This was actually one of the main routes of the very famous Silk Route, my friends. Right. So uh, this was the northern route, which was called, as I mentioned to you, which was called 
the Khorasan Highway, right? The Khorasan Highway. So my um, uh, my contention is that um, the Abbasid revolutionaries that came from uh, this area of and of which we will hear more, right? Their intention actually was to conquer the this the territory on the northern route because the shortest route that connected you know China to um, to Eastern Mediterranean and and this map doesn't really show it this this side of it shows it right um, that the that this was the shortest route from China to Eastern Mediterranean, right? If you wanted to trade, right? And so, um, uh, and so they wanted actually the Abbasid revolutionaries wanted to take over this this uh, this territory in order to have a zone that crisscrosses Africa, you know, Asia, Central Asia, and as we will see. India and as we have, as we have seen actually India right um, um, that 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 all this territory comes under the Abbasids and therefore there is the free free flow of trade right now uh, free flow of trade right so that we um, we have such an image my friends right. Um, for the circuits of trade, right, in the 13th century. Um, I submit to you that this was also the case, except for um, this part, right, uh, and, uh, and these parts yet, right, Except for that, this was also the the circuits of trade, as we have seen, right? One going through the Red Sea, going through um, Western Arabia. Um, so there is this thing that, uh, you know, the, the route, incense route, um, right? There is also this route that we don't see here, right? That goes to... To southern Iran as well as northwestern China and so on and so forth so if you can just pay attention and stop the video for a second um, you'll see that um, this is in fact the trade routes that we talked about right all along right so my contention <clears throat> In my forthcoming work will be that the Abbasid revolution, revolutionaries, uh, the Umayyads had already connected uh, this area, yeah, um, Afghanistan, to southern Iran and to northwestern um, India, right, and of course through southern Iran to Basra, right. But the Abbasid, what the Abbasid really wanted was to to take over this trade route, yeah, which was actually the shortest trade route, if you see, from somewhere here to somewhere here, shortest trade route. Right, actually. Uh, otherwise, you know, um, you would have to go to the ocean and, you know, go to Persian Gulf and go um, upstream in T uh, if Euphrates or Tigris, right, to get to Antioch or n numerous other ways that we discussed, right, uh, to go through those, right? So the Abbasid wanted to actually have an interconnected um, world of trade. And we will see what happens as a result of this interconnections, right? 
Well, furthermore, with the coming of the Abbasids, the Persians once again come to the fore, right, of the new regime that is being established. So, uh, right, it is during the early Abbasid times, right, that as we will see, most of Islamic dogma takes shape, that uh, the, the biography of the Prophet is written, um, that, um, and, and many more issues as far as the Islamic dogma is concerned, which we will get to um, in, in our next session. Sufficient, suffice it here to say, that the, one of the first things that the Abbasid did was to move the capital from Damascus in Syria, from Damascus in Syria to Baghdad, right? The round city, the round city of Baghdad, and we will talk about that. Um, that, you know, so that, you know, moving east meant that the Abbasid want came to have a much more Eastern perspective. And of course, the closest people um, uh, to, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the populations besides the river valley civilization of um, India, right? The next, the, the, the next cultural tradition, important cultural tradition that we have in this area is of course also the Persian one, right? Besides what becomes the Arabic, uh, Arabic tradition um, after the Abbasid revolution, actually. But anyway, okay. So amongst the issues that that we can see that uh, that that is basically from a Persian element, right? Is the very foundation of Baghdad, the architect of which was a Persian, and some argue that the the name itself, Bak, Dad, Bak is God in Persian, Dad is given, right? So the city that is God given, right? That um, the Caliph Mansur, one of the early early, like the second caliph, basically, Mansur of the Abbasids, um, had created, right, uh, from, a, from a Persian, what we believe to be a Persian prototype of this round city. Um, okay, so the other thing that was very clear uh, was that and the office of the Z was created, which again, you know, prime minister, which was again a, 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 a sort of a, a Persian office, right? And um, anyway, all these, all these, all the bureaus, bureaus that um, the Umayyads, if you remember, uh, had established, all those, of course, existed, right? Before the Umayyads come uh, to power, in the in what was former Byzantine territories and what in what was former Sasanian territories, so um, but um, but okay, the office of vizier was was a new innovation of the Abbasids themselves. In the Persian tradition, the sovereign, right, i.e., the caliph, retreated to the depth of his palaces. Right, so out of contact uh, with the regular population, right, and um, and um, yeah, we talked about the uh, city of Baghdad. So now, uh, in the next session, we will talk about um, more. We talk about more about um, the the Abbasid revolution and what happens on the wake of the coming of the Abbasids to power. So until then, my friends, uh, I bid you farewell. Thank you.